This time I want to give you a little bit of a lecture on how to graph quadratic equations and instead of doing it in a very systematic manner, in an exact manner, I want to give you kind of an overview of how to look at this in a more general sense. So how do you graph something like this? Again, this is a general form or the standard form for a quadratic equation, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Notice you have an x squared term, an x to the first power term, and then simply a constant there. a, b, and c are simple constants. So let's, uh, let's say, for example, that you have y equals x squared. What does that look like? So you may not realize this, but this is exactly the same here, except in this case, b and c are both 0, so they disappear, and you're simply left with an ax squared. In this case, your a would be 1. What does that look like? Well, if you were to graph that, on a y-x axis, there's your y, there's your x, it would look like this. The vertex would be right at the origin, the axis of symmetry would be the y-axis, and there would be no other roots except the point where the line, the parabola crosses the x-axis, so in this case your root would be x equals zero. What if you have y equals, let's say, 5x squared? Well, that would actually narrow the parabola. So if this is the drawing or the parabola for y equals x squared, then if you graph y equals 5x squared, it would be a skinnier parabola. It would look like this. So there's your y-axis, there's your x-axis. And then if, for example, you have y equals 1 tenth x squared, that would kind of widen the parabola and that would look more like this. There's your y-axis, and there's your x-axis. That gives you kind of a general feel for how to grab these parabolas. All right, now let me make some room here. Okay, what would it look like if you were to graph this quadratic equation? y equals minus x squared. Well, that would simply turn the parabola around. So if you were to graph that one, it would look like this. Since it doesn't have a b and a c, Therefore, no second and third terms right here, just a simple ax squared term, and the a is a negative 1. The problem would look upside down like that. All right, now what if you have something that looks like this? y equals x squared plus 1. So here you don't have a b, but you do have a c, and the c is 1 in this case. Well, that would simply raise the parabola up 1. So if you know that y equals x squared looks like this, so there's the y equals x squared. I'm going to use a dashed line for that, so the dashed line would then represent y equals x squared. If you now have a y equals x squared plus 1, it simply would raise the whole parabola up one unit, and I'll use a straight line for that, or a, I should say a solid line, then your parabola will look like that. So y equals x squared plus 1 is this one, y equals x squared is this one right here. Right? And then, of course, it stands to follow that if you write y equals x squared minus 1, that would simply lower the whole problem by 1, and it would then look like this. So this would be here, the vertex. It would be at minus 1 on the y-axis. There's the x-axis right there. All right, now, what if you had something that looked like this? y equals x squared or not like that, Let, uh, let's come up with this example. How about minus one quantity square like that? What does that look like if you were to graph that? Well, that would shift the parabola left or right. In the case of a minus, it would shift the parabola to the right. In the case of a plus, it would shift to the left. And I'll show you that example in just a moment, but let's grab this one first. So first you write, well, this would be a y equals x squared graph. And then if you shift it over to the, um, a minus means to the right by one, so you shift it over by one, and your vertex would now be at x equals one. There's your x-axis, there's your y-axis. So this is your graph that represents y equals the quantity x minus one squared. If you now have a problem that looks like this, y equals x plus one quantity squared, that would shift the whole parabola to the left, and it would look like this. And it would just touch the x-axis at the point y equals negative 1. There's your x-axis 
and there's your y-axis. Okay, now let's combine them. What if you have an equation that looks like this? y is equal to the quantity x minus 2 squared plus 1. All right, the plus 1 will raise the parabola up by 1. The minus 2 will move the parabola to the right by 2 units. And so this parabola would look like this. So 1, 2, and up 1. Your vertex is going to be there. Remember, two spots to the right, one number up, and then the problem would be graphed like that. And maybe one more. What if you had y is equal to minus x plus 1 squared minus 2? All right. Here, the whole parabola would shift down two units. It would shift to the left one unit. And the problem in this case would open downward because it's a minus x squared term when you multiply this out. So this would look like this. There's your y-axis. There's your x-axis. The vertex can be found uh, shifted to the left one unit, shifted down two units, so one, two, so there's your vertex, and the problem would open downward, so it would look so, something like that. All right, now you say, well, none of those look like your general form over here. What if you have an equation that has indeed an A, B, and a C? Well, let me show an example like that as well. Okay, so far I've given you examples that don't exactly look like the standard form, but they're very handy, very nice to know how to do this. But what if you have an example that looks like this? Um, y equals x squared plus 2x minus 1. Now, you can do a, a quick transformation of this by following this technique. Say y is equal to x squared plus 2x. Take the minus 1 and move it to the right, leave some space. Then what you're going to do next is to take this term right here, known as the middle term bx, take the coefficient b, in this case b is 2, divide that number by 2, and square it. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, square it, 1 squared is 1, and add that, plus 1. Of course, since you added plus 1, you must also subtract minus 1 so that you didn't change anything on the equation. Now take this portion of the equation, you can now factor that, because that should be a perfect square. So this can be factored as y is equal to x plus 1 times x plus 1. Notice if you multiply this together, you get back the x squared plus 2x plus 1. And here, of course, don't forget the minus 1 minus 1 is a minus 2. Or this can be written as y equals the quantity x plus 1 squared minus 2. And now you notice that this is very much like something we've seen before. We can go ahead and graph this now. Notice that the parabola will be shifted to the left by 1 and down by 2. So 1 to the left, down, minus 1, minus 2. So right here, at x equals minus 1, y equals minus 2 is the vertex. Since this is a positive quantity, I can then realize that my parabola must look something like this, and that will be the graph of the parabola of this particular equation. So even though it didn't start out by looking like one of those examples, you can quickly transform it using this technique called the completion of the square method, which I'll show you later in a little bit more detail when we actually start solving these quadratic equations and finding the roots of these. But at least now you have some good idea of how to quickly graph a quadratic equation without going through a lot of the work that you normally would have to go through to graph these. All right, so now next we're going to actually solve quadratic equations.